by the edge of the sword. The game is Swords of Sovereignty. Battle is boarding in. We're in the middle of turn three. And not too surprisingly, there's a lot more going on now. To a lot more going on to pay attention to than when you start. When you start, all units are fresh, all units are in command. Um, things are just a lot more simple, straightforward, and orderly. Now things have gotten really mixed up and messed up, and, and it's just very different. Um, but that's good that uh, this is uh, adding some interesting uh, wrinkles to what's going on. So I'll just go in order here first. Um, I started off with uh, Adolphe here on Siegfried's side. He's a very average commander, by the way. We'll take a closer look at him again. Hopefully that's coming up on the screen. Um, hopefully that's coming through in the picture. He's got his uh, crest, his name. Two is, is his command rating, very average, used for uh, determining the order of activation during the turn. Three is his command span, never influenced by terrain or enemy units. Six is the movement allowance, and one is his bonus. Um, so that's Adolphe on Siegfried's side. He's stacked with some knights. They are up here on this level one terrain next to the village of Fulingen. Um, but here's the deal. Um, he's got... He's got this knight unit up here adjacent to two enemy units, one to the front and one to the rear. Just so happens both of them are out of command. The unit to the front is a militia unit, but it is discouraged. Now, right now it is in, in command span of Adolphe, one, two, three. But if he attacks forward, he is very likely to be pulled away or farther forward yet again. And do you want to do that? Do you not want to do that? Um, Probably if all these enemy units circle that knight unit, they could probably bring that unit down. Is that the best use of those forces? Um, I don't know. A lot of decisions. Um, otherwise, Adolphe has these two militia units here stacked together. Total strength of five. They are up on the rise with Adolphe. They're looking down on it, the other Adolphe and some knights from John the First side. Um, and then back here, Adolphe, yep, Adolphe has these um, knights that are fatigued, discouraged, and out of command. <laughs> and resting. Um, don't want to do anything with them because they're resting. Um, I thought about attacking with these two militia units down the hill. They would get a plus one for down the hill, but militia against um, knights, that's at a minus three. Um, I don't think they would do, yeah, I don't think they would do very well, especially since, oh wow, that is a four strength knight unit, troop quality of six. Adolphe, this Adolphe has a, a bonus of two. So that just doesn't seem to be worth it. Which now is making me wonder, what is the use of these militia units? Maybe hold the militia units off, don't engage them until maybe maybe they can gang up on a fatigued and discouraged enemy unit maybe, but these militia units seem to be of real li limited value so far. All of this is to say that because the formation is spread out from here all the way back to here. Um, just seems like I have to just hold a turn. So I go ahead and mark him complete, activation complete. Then I'm going to go to, then I went to Godfrey over here. You know, Godfrey is adjacent to an enemy. He's stacked with discouraged and fatigued knights as well. Who, who does he have kind of fresh and not engaged? Again, two militia units, right? Do I move those militia units up here? 
I thought about moving them up here so they could fight with Godfrey and his fatigued knights against this enemy unit, but then the militia units are adjacent to this enemy unit, which is dismounted men-at-arms. I mean, that's not nothing. Um, they are fatigued, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know that that's worth it. Um, this unit belongs, actually, this unit does not belong to Godfrey. This unit belongs to John the First, who's way up here. Uh, so then I thought, okay, oh, here's another one of Godfrey's units. But this uh, mounted men-at-arms unit, I mean, it's completely, or almost completely surrounded by enemy units and fatigued. So what do I do? Do I attack forward? You attack forward. You just pull yourself away from your commander even further. Um, I don't know. So then I thought, well, maybe he holds as well. Which brings me back to this Adolfe unit. Uh, two, two, yeah. Yeah. Back to this Adolfe unit. Well, he's not in good, good shape either. He's fine with his knights up here. But back here, out of command and fatigue militia. Um, yeah, militia, discouraged, out of command, way back here. Um, he's got uh, out of command knights here and out of command knights here. So then finally I thought, well, maybe uh, since Adolfe's here, he's got a command span of three. Maybe I go ahead and use, but move these guys up like that, like that. Um, they're downhill from the enemy, which isn't good, but at least now they're within command span. But that also means that I'm not... Oh, and that was the other thing. Actually, let me, ba actually, let me back up. I was thinking maybe this is a time to actually have Adolfe pull back. I mean, I don't think I have to do it. Either I get all of his units up with him, or I pull him back. Um, so then I was thinking maybe two, which by the way, moving, changing face within an enemy front unit. Again, it's a simplification. I don't think it would be the same. These are knights downhill from two militia units. Um, two, four, five, six. So maybe he, um, restarts their kind of a bit of a regrouping, then move his non-command, out-of-command units forward like that. But in any case, it's just really interesting. Not a lot of units, not a lot of pieces on the map. So this is, I believe, a very average size battle um, for this series. There's a lot going on, and I would, now I realize how much they pack in by having, so now I see how much they pack in by having uh, these different states, right? So fresh and fatigued, then discouraged and routed, and so you can have any combination of these. You can have a fresh unit that's routed, you can have a fatigued unit that's discouraged or whatever combo there. And now I see what what different um, you know, levels of simulation gaming uh, they get out of that, they get from that. Um, and overall, it's, it's interesting how you push, push, push. And the rules are not, don't, you know, the rules don't hit you over the head, but now it's, it's pretty neat to see how if you push, push, push your army, it gets, it gets broken up, which is a serious condition. It gets fatigued, which is a very serious condition. Um, and then of course it gets demoralized um, in different ways. Obviously a very critical condition. Um, all very interesting. Um, definitely a lot going on for a small physical footprint.